like to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. We're going to jump into my Roth IRA account. Um, this is Roth IRA account number two. This is of a self-directed nature. This is um, just shy of 126000 uh, in the account to chronicle the holdings and uh, show how I deploy my wealth. I enjoy doing these for a couple different reasons. It actually gives a nice backdrop um, to when I'm explaining why I do what I do. Okay. It's not necessarily so important for you to understand what I do in way of the uh, actual holdings within the account. Um, by all means, if you want to copy the account, you're welcome to do so. Um, but I would stress the importance of understanding the um, portfolio fundamental uh, aspect of my investing thesis. What that means is I try to deploy multiple strategies. Um, I put uh, multiple elements to work um, in that strategy. And to meet those strategic goals, uh, I put um, different products to work within the portfolio that fill that need for different strategic application. And for new investors, this is a, a great way to sit back and you know watch uh, a real portfolio, how it performs, how the dollars do fluctuate. Um, what a real portfolio looks like. Um, this is dollars at work. So you're going to see some red. You're going to see some, you know, down $375. I don't want somebody to look at this and say, wow, this is crazy. I, I, I could use all kinds of stuff for the 375. Now, this account has been uh, maturing for many, many years. And I have taken a lot of trading profit and the ability to enter a $10,000 bill uh, into a company like Apple Computers, um, I, I don't focus on this 375. Whereas a new investor may look at that and say, "Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, Ryan's not a very good investor. You know, he's down a dollar and thirty cents in Citigroup, or he's he's down sixteen dollars in Google." What you what you fail to see is the amount of trading profit that I've been able to render off of Google over the over the last few years. It's made me a small fortune, and, and a lot of those dollars are. Uh, flowed into new opportunities, and we're just waiting for those to to mature and, and uh, turn into good investments over time. And they and they will. I have conviction on the stock market. Uh, I love stock market investing, but I'm mature enough to understand, and I can share with you guys that not every position that you enter into is going to work out right away when you expect it to. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to humble you in teaching you that it does not work out when you expect it to, and it does not go up when you expect it to, it will probably do the opposite of what you expect it to do. It's funny how that happens a lot of the time in stock market investing. But if you stay true to your program over time, it usually pays off quite nicely, as, as indicated here by the portfolio that you see in front of you. So like I said, 126,000 on the top end to work in this portfolio. Don't know how many total, total holdings. There are about four or five elements, just like the other accounts that I've chronicled through the channel, through the evolution of the channel and what I share and where I find value in uh, for those visual learners that can tune into a message like mine and see a real portfolio at work, where I'm putting my dollars, why I'm putting my dollars to work that way. And, and it can help you really relate with the idea of, of what invested dollars actually look like. Not in, not dollars in a savings account, not dollars in your wallet, not dollars in a checking account. These are invested dollars within one of the most sacred, if not the most sacred of all accounts, and that is the Roth IRA account. In other words, I've been able to fund this up over the years um, doing um, what I could, when I could, up to the maximum caps. Remember, we can only contribute up to $6,000 a year on this as of late. Um, into this account to put to work year over year. Okay. So it's not as if I can just take uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars and put it to work in this account. It doesn't work that way. It has to be grown up over time. And that's the real benefit to you is understanding what you're looking at here is in fact unique in nature um, and, and how I deploy money uh, in the stock market. So the passive I always start with first. I think it's super important to earmark the passive. I have three elements of passive product to work in this portfolio. The first is the VYM. This is a, a nice 50 share position. This pays a nice 3% dividend, just over 5,000 in this. I've got the VNQ here. 
uh, just a twenty five hundred dollar twenty five share position in VNQ, which is the real estate's uh, REIT in this to work uh, to add a little bit of real estate exposure in this portfolio and having realty income in the other portfolio, there really wasn't any other REITs that I wanted to invest in from a single perspective. So I just bought the whole sector, put it in there, that's fine. Um, and that'll work going forward. The final is the NASDAQ and the triple Q's exposure here, 10 shares. Be really nice to build this up uh, over time as I do have some long-term strategic goals for each of these holdings as the account grows and matures as certain speculative positions mature, grow, and provide some house money, I'll have some drop points to rotate some of those profits into and uh, invest house money. That's the whole game here is to render as much house profit as you possibly can uh, with the real dollars that have flowed in here over time. And, and it, it becomes a lot easier to invest in the manner that I do with house money um, when you know that those are profits that uh, weren't earned dollars on the onset when they flowed into this account. Very, very important takeaway. So that's it for the, the passive element. For the dividend growth, it'll be the largest element of this portfolio or pillar that you guys could relate with. Uh, see an example of uh, invest like this or not. That's really the key here is to understand, okay, dividend growth. What does it look like, Ryan? Well, it looks like on the top end, with Apple computers, um, that we've got a, a pretty good technological name here that uh, helps embolden that dividend and healthcare with AbbVie right below it. I have liquidated my Citigroup position. I'll probably come to regret that, who knows? Uh, but we were up nicely in the position. It was a multi-year position for me and uh, just wanted to take some profits in that and roll it elsewhere. And that's what I did and that's fine. We'll skip over some of these uh, large growth and we'll go down to IBM in the old tech category, Johnson & Johnson in healthcare, Kimberly Clark in Staples, uh, Coca-Cola in Staples, McDonald's I've liquidated out and I've shifted over to the other portfolios. So this was a big profit taking initiative here, um, took this profit and then rolled over uh, five more shares of what this uh, 20 share position was in this account. So just like climbing a ladder. <laughs> I invest like climbing a ladder. Very, very simple. I don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. It's a lot of fun. Um, I render a lot of successes within the portfolio. I have a few missteps. The only difference between this and gambling is that gambling is an all or nothing game. In other words, if I invest, uh, if I put $100 down on the blackjack table, I could lose it all, right? Uh, investing, I could be down but I choose when I call my chips. And that's the important part to understand about investing is that just because you're down uh, with a paper loss doesn't mean you're always out. It means that you just control your hand and you need to continue to feed that investment, the, the key element to making that a successful investment. And that is usually time, okay? Merck, a Dow component here in healthcare, nice big position here at 50 shares, just shy of 4,000. Um, this was the spinoff from Merck, um, Oregon here with 100 shares. That's nice. Royal Dutch Shell in the uh, energy space. Uh, Raytheon Technologies, we've emboldened that position up to 50 in industrials. And uh, finally, Exxon Mobil in the energy space. So uh, a couple big oil majors here within this to kind of round out the um, energy sector exposure. Uh, large cap growth in here starts with um, Alibaba in the uh, discretionary space. So that's a nice big position. That's run up nicely. The last couple of days, it, man, I was down $300 just a couple of days ago. So if you heard that and you're looking at some of these positions, they're down at the time of filming this. I have no doubt that within a couple of days at, at, on the short term or medium term that these will come back to positive positions. It happens. Alibaba, boom, just swung to the upside, went from 210 to 230 in a matter of a couple days. So where we were down 300 bucks in the position, now we're up 111. 2%, nothing to shake a stick at. Um, and this is a great name and, and sales force here. $25,000, $6,000 bill here in cloud computing. A nice technological large cap growth Dow component, I might add. So nice there. Um, large cap growth in Google. 
So that kind of rounds out my large cap growth in this portfolio. So we've got some really nice big names in here. Um, really glad to, to see those in there. Really good anchoring that large cap growth element in this portfolio. And then finally, the, uh, the little bit of speculation that I've got in here uh, with SoFi. I'm not going to talk about that. That's just a thorn in my side right now. Um, highly on, very, very encouraged on this uh, position here as we look to embolden, get a little bit of appreciation to the upside there. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that. We're along this speculative name, both of them. We only own two, nothing to nothing to get too crazy on, uh, but uh, 2,500 uh, shares there in highly on in the Roth IRA. That rounds out the portfolio review um, to provide you guys awareness on the elements, the, the actual fundamental strategy that I deploy within the portfolio is the important takeaway for you guys. If you're going to try to mimic this and duplicate it overnight, you're probably going to have a hard time. Okay, This has been built up over many, many years, but it doesn't mean that you can't take $1,500, right? which is 10% of the portfolio I just disclosed to you and start the exact same account. It's relative. It doesn't matter. It's not a mark of an individual. Everybody's got to have their starting place. I did, and I started the very account that I just disclosed to you guys with that very same $1,500. Guys, if you appreciate the message coming through, you want to make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the thumbs up for me, notification bell. bell. And most importantly, you need to share this message. Google doesn't do it for me, so I expect you to do it. If you resonate with my message. Um, the fact that I separate uh, opinion from fact in the stock market, recommend the channel, bring them on. We'd be glad to have them. We'll empower one investor at a time uh, until this message starts to catch on and understanding that investing uh, isn't so crazy after all. Uh, it can be accessible to the masses out there. And the more we foot stomp this message, the more we can validate that fact. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in with me. Good luck in your investment future.